Welcome to the Shritecast, where IT training is free for everyone. My name is Andrew Krauthammel, and today we are going to talk about how to create a DMZ in a SonicWall firewall. This is something I've seen come up uh, on some questions on Experts Exchange and other websites, so I figured let's make a little video on how to simply create a standard DMZ on a new generation SonicWall. Uh, this is something that in the older uh, standard OS devices and, and depending on the model you had uh, there were opt ports, OPT ports or DMZ ports uh, that were specifically designated to this sort of functionality where you would create a separate network, a separate demilitarized zone where you can have um, untrusted devices stay and then create firewall rules between that DMZ and your LAN and your WAN depending on how you want things to work the new way of doing this with uh, the new generation of sonic walls or the new generation of really of anything, Cisco, Wattcard, whoever, uh, almost all of them now are zone based. So we have to create, put ports into zones, uh, hopefully have our zones created already at that point, and then create firewall rules amongst those zones. So a zone based firewall really, it sound, they make it sound fancier than it is. Zones really are just groups. So it's just a group of ports. So whatever ports you want to be in that certain zone, well then you assign them to that zone and then you make firewall rules amongst the zones. Uh, and then anything within those zones usually are trusted. So you can have four ports in the LAN zone. Uh, each of those ports could be on a different subnet, like different VLANs or something like that. Uh, but they're all under the same umbrella, the, the same group of hi, I'm a trusted LAN zone. Or you can have a couple ports that are DMZ zone, or a couple ports that are something completely different that you come up with, like the employee zone, or the HR zone, or something. Whatever might be the wireless zone, the guest zone. You can do whatever you want. So, it really, it really is just a named grouping of these ports. So we're going to end up doing that in this new, in the new Sonic we have here. We have a TZ100, and we're going to go ahead and assign a port to a zone and then go ahead and uh, change the firewall rules for that zone so that it is then uh, allowed uh, internet access for, for guest access, for example, uh, but no access to your internal network. So, for example, we could have a wireless access point set up connected to this port that is assigned to the DMZ zone, and then without any sort of internal fanciness on the sonic wall, without any embedded wireless functionality or anything, we can have it act as a guest wireless access without uh, having any issues with them accessing your internal network uh, if you're running a store or something like that. So what we're going to do is go to network interfaces and I'm going to show my port shield interfaces so we see everything here and we're going to choose uh, one of our ports here to become a member of the DMZ zone. Uh, X2 out of the box happens to be unassigned for me so we're gonna go ahead and use that one you can use any of the ports you just have to remove what they currently are assigned so if you wanted to use X4 you could just go in there and change its assignment uh, so but we're gonna use X2 so I'm gonna go to X2 configure that and here you go first the thing you can do it's, it's the only thing on the screen what zone do you want this to be uh, we don't want it to be LAN we don't want it to be WAN so let's go choose DMZ. So this is going to be our demilitarized zone. Luckily, in the Sonic Walls, they have DMZ already as a legitimate zone that you can configure. Uh, but again, you can name, you can make your own zone over on the left here. You can go to Network Zones, make your your own zone, and then assign it to that. It, it's, it doesn't matter. It don't don't get caught up on the built-ins. So we're going to make it a DMZ. Uh, static IP mode, so we're going to have to assign a usable IP address on whatever subnet we decide upon for our DMZ. So since our internal network is the default 168.168 168, uh, network that a sonic wall sits at, let's choose something else like 10.0. I'm going to be bored. <laughs> I'm, I'm being boring here. 10.0.0.0. And we'll leave it as a slash 24. And we're going to call this our guest access. Since it's our DMZ, I'm not going to allow any management or user login or anything like that. Um, that's going to open up possible security issues. So let's just leave that unchecked for now. 
and we don't have to do anything fancy over here in our expert uh, advanced area. So we're just going to go ahead. Oh, I just realized I gave it the wrong IP. <laughs> Let's go back in there. I know some of you are probably saying, you can't do that, you guy, you're insane. There we go. First usable address. My, I'm sorry. There we go. Guest access. So now we've given that port a usable address. Um, the standard normally is the first or last address of that subnet that you've designated for your router. So uh, I'm going to use dot one. And so now we have that set up. So basically if we go take a cable and plug it into X2, that whatever that is plugged in on X2 is now going to be on that DMZ network and it now has to uh, have certain rules set up so it can communicate where we want it to go. So let's go into our zones and check out how our DMZ zone is configured. Uh, by, this is what a Sonic will looks like from its zone configuration by default. They have things set up for LAN and WAN. Uh, so if you subscribe to their security services, then those security services are already enabled on the LAN and the WAN. I have found that the SonicWall devices, uh, their processing power is, is pretty substantial, so it's okay to turn on a lot of the security services uh, for a, a lot of the zones, as long as you don't have incredibly high amounts of throughput, it, it works out okay. So since this is a DMZ and you know, we have the potential of untrusted people getting into this uh, this zone. I want to turn on all the security services on it because I want to make sure they don't do anything bad while they're connected to my firewall. Whether or not they're in a different zone, you know, I don't want them to mess things up. So let's configure our DMZ zone. And I'm going to make sure that my antivirus, my IPS, anti-spyware, I'm going to enable that. And you can see content filter is on by default. That's fine for now. Uh, oh, we're going to add in one more here. I'm going to add an app control. And actually, you know what? See how it says here, uh, interface trust? Basically, that means any interfaces that are plugged in uh, to, to, that, to the sonic wall and assigned the same zone are trusted, so communication can go between them. Uh, I'm going to uncheck interface trust although it doesn't matter right now because I only have one port assigned to the DMZ zone if I assign other ports to the DMZ zone there could be a potential security issue if if I have different uh, different subnets of, of different DMZs that might have different needs uh, under the same uh, under the same zone and with interface trust on you can you can run into security issues but then again you can also just create a different zone for each one that you want to do anyway so there's different ways of going around it but I'm just gonna uncheck allow interface trust for now so that it's a little bit more secure there we go so now all of our security services are enabled the basic set uh, and I'm gonna be doing basic content filtering so they can't go to hate sites and stuff like that and uh, interface trust is disabled. So our zone is set up okay now. Uh, additionally, I'm going to have to go in and add, if, if the sonic wall is using, uh, being the DHCP server, I'm going to have to go in and add a range for my D, uh, for DHCP for that DMZ zone. So for example, that the, in the example that I used, I'm going to hook this up to a wireless access point, like a cheap uh, Linksys, Netgear, wireless access point, whatever it might be. Um, I'm going to have to provide DHCP services after people authenticate with the wireless access point. So we're going to go in and add a dynamic range for that. So what we're going to do, there we go. That makes it nice and easy for you. If you choose pre-populate, it just kind of does everything for you there. And I'll just start it at 100 just because. All right, we're going to inherit our DNS servers from the SonicWall settings, and okay, that looks good enough for now. We'll deal with that. So now we have a range. So when someone requests a DHCP address on uh, the DMZ zone, and it comes in through X2, we're going to give them a 10 dot address of some sort. So now that's set up, let's go to our firewall rules. So we're, we're getting down to the last few things we need to do here. Uh, if you had gone into your access rules 
Previously, before we assigned the DMZ zone to an interface, DMZ would not have shown up in this uh, matrix here. So now we've added an interface to the DMZ zone, the DMZ shows up in our matrix. So let's go take a look at our rules. Uh, from the DMZ, if I'm someone on this theoretical access, uh, wireless access system, on the DMZ zone, and I want to get into the LAN, I want to try and hack my network, what's my firewall rule? Oh, deny. Perfect. So by default, we're set up to deny everything from DMZ to LAN. Let's go check DMZ to WAN. Oh, look at that. Allow. So we're automatically allowed from the DMZ to get out to the internet, but not get into our LAN. And then additionally, we have some other uh, zone to zone rules we can set in here based on VPNs and whatnot. So let's go check this. Uh, DMZ to DMZ. Uh, not really that concerning since we turn off interface trust but we can go in and add a deny rule uh, or there's an, a, uh, an expected deny if there's none in here so we can just leave that for now uh, let's go DMZ to VPN alright so now here's something that you might want to disable uh, so the DMZ can get to the VPN networks by default you might want to turn that off. So if you have site-to-site -site VPN tunnels configured, uh, or you know some other sort of tunneling system for, with your wireless uh, built in uh, into the sonic wall, you're probably going to want to go in here and deny this traffic. And then additionally, we have SSL VPN. But we don't have that really enabled on this right now, so it's not a concern. And it's also empty, so it has a uh, inherit deny. So also we can go and check from the DM from the the LAN, sorry, to the DMZ, what kind of traffic's allowed there. All right, so if we're in the local network, we can get to people on the DMZ. That's something that's kind of a personal preference. If you want the people to be able to do that, okay. Uh, most of the time, in this sort of situation that we're configuring, where it's a like a guest network, probably going to deny it because there's really no need to do that. But if you had a series of servers or something like that set up on your DMZ, like an email server or FTP server or whatever it might be, you might want to allow internal people in the company on the LAN to get to the DMZ, but just not the DMZ get back to the LAN, except for return traffic. So, uh, this is a situation where it's currently set up in, in like a company aspect where you're hosting servers, so you might want to get from the LAN to the DMZ. So we can go in and change that to deny though if we want. Alright, additionally, uh, WAN to DMZ. That's going to be deny because you know we don't want people on the internet just accessing those guests that are connected to our wireless system on this port, so that's good. And then we can go in and check other stuff in here as well. And uh, DMZ to DMZ, that has an inherit deny, that's blank. DMZ to VPN, or sorry, VPN to DMZ. So here's also something that you might want to deny as well. So again, if you don't want them to access VPN, uh, resources and you don't want VPN resources to access them well then deny both sides of that so this is another series where you might want to deny this and then finally we have SSL VPN again uh, from SSL VPN to the DMZ so this is something that you might want to allow if you have remote access users trying to get to servers that are inside the DMZ but in this example where we're setting it up as like an access point system with a guest network we don't care, so we can leave it blank. That's fine. And at this point, we are done. That, that's really all there is to it. All, we can go get a cheap access point, configure it, set it up for you know WPA2 with uh, you know real basic configuration. It's going to hook into X2 there, and then we can install that access point in you know our lobby of whatever we're trying to set up here for for guests to access or a conference room or something like that. And any, anyone who authenticates with that access point, they're going to pull a DHCP. 
uh, off of our DHCP server settings we configured and then they're going to be allowed access out to the internet but not back uh, into the local area network and so that's the basics of how to set up a DMZ on a sonic wall and it's also very similar in other uh, zone based firewalls as well so uh, if you enjoyed this uh, I thank you very much for watching and uh, please like and subscribe uh, to Shritecast and uh, come back uh, next Wednesday for another video and I thank you for watching